Hello everybody. In this video, we will learn transient response characteristics for underdamped second order systems. We will concentrate on underdamped uh, response because we will have more metrics which are meaningful to characterize underdamped response. But for each metric, we will try to understand its relation to the uh, other cases such as critical damp and under damp. Okay, so a typical under damp response looks like this. Okay, it starts from zero. Okay, so this is for standard form. Its steady state value is equal to one. Okay, in a standard case. So it has an oscillatory behavior, but oscillations decay. So if we draw the env envelopes also, we can look like this. Okay, so these envelopes uh, technically uh, is taking the convergence speed or convergence uh, time constant is characterized by this exponential. Okay, that's nice. Uh, we know that since it is uh, underdamped, uh, it has a complex conjugate root. We have to uh, complex roots, they are conjugate on the uh, Poser plot. Uh, the uh, imaginary part is equal to omega d, which is also equal to the uh, frequency of oscillations. It's called damped nature frequency. The real part is equal to minus psi omega n, which is the technically uh, the exponential part, which technically determines the speed of uh, convergence. Okay, and this is it. So uh, let's start with these uh, important uh, characteristics. Okay, let's call it that. The first uh, important characteristic is called rise time. Okay, so it's important, but I can clearly say that it is the least used uh, characteristics, and I will talk about that in a second. Okay, what's rise time? Rise time is the instant when my output crosses the steady state line, or uh, y is equal to one line. Okay, what is my output that I want to go? Okay, and reaching that point as quick as possible should be my goal, right? Okay, that's nice. So how I compute rise time? It's very simple. I need to equate y t r to 1, okay? And this is 1 minus something. So in order to be equal to 1, this something, the other part should be equal to 0. Okay, so I want this part to be equal to 0. I know that this part is constant. Okay, so I don't need that. So sine omega dt plus phi should be 0. Okay, in that response, I can compute the rise time as pi minus phi divided by omega d. Okay, so as you can see, it depends on the phi angle, which is a direct monotonic relationship of the damping ratio, and omega d, which is the depth nature frequency, which depends on both the nature frequency and the damping ratio. Okay, why rise time is uh, not used very much compared to other metrics is very simple. Now let's draw a critical damp response or overdamp response. Okay, let's assume that this is an overdamp response. Okay, that's nice. And let's assume that this is a critical damp response. Okay, something like that. So what is rise time? Rise time is simply equal to infinity. Okay, so for critical damp and underdamp cases, rise time is useless because the output never reaches exactly the state, state value. It only reaches as time goes to infinity, and we know that critical damp case is the technically the optimal case that we want to achieve. And for a value which is bad for a critical damp case, as you can see, it's not very uh, useful. Of course, if we are limited to under damp case, uh, we can technically use it. And one of the good advantages of rise time is computation is very easy. Okay, that's nice. Now let's go to the other metrics. Okay, the peak time. Okay, so peak time itself is not very important. Okay, it's peak time is the time when the output reaches its first peak value, or which is the point here. So it is the time. So how do you compute the peak time? As you can see, since it's the peak, we can take the derivative of y, okay, with respect to t, equate it to zero, and solve the equation. So the derivation is a little bit long, but at the end we obtain a very nice and simple formula such that tp is equal to pi divided by omega d. As you can see, peak time only depends on omega d, and we know that omega d is equal to omega m, 1 minus cosi square. Okay, that's nice. Uh, and again, uh, if you talk about peak time and critical time case, we know that cosi is equal to 1, peak time is infinity, the peak time is not very important, as you can see, okay, uh, the timing, because for the critical and the order case, peak time is also equal to 
infinity. Okay, so it's not the point, but ex actually, so if we are limited to under that case, this is the, the time, this is the formula that we can use to compute the peak time. Why peak time is important, it's not its timing, it is value. Okay, and now the second or the third characteristic is called maximum overshoot or maximum percentage overshoot. So what's that? It's the amount here, okay, by which the response exceeds the value one. It's overshoot. It's really bad, right? Because I want to reach one as quick as possible, but I want to stay at one. Okay, let's assume that this is equal to 0 0.5, which means that I have 50% error. I just... I want to go like 10 meters, I go to 50 meters first, come back, I do some oscillations and reach 10 meters, okay? And it's directly associated with the unwanted oscillations. And we want MP or maximum overshoot to be as small as possible. And computation of overshoot is easy if you know the peak time, okay? And if we compute overshoot, which we need to use technically this formula, YTP minus V, one, one of course, if we solve the equations, MP or maximum overshoot is computed using this formula e to the power minus pi. Okay, that's great. Psi divided by 1 minus psi square. As you can see, overshoot only depends on uh, psi or damping ratio. It's one of the reasons why we want to use it uh, as much as possible. Uh, and it is equal to e to the power minus pi divided by tangent 5. Okay, so as you can see, overshoot doesn't depend on nature frequency. It only depends on the damping ratio. Okay, now why overshoot is important? As you can see, overshoot is only uh, meaningful directly for the underdamped case. Okay, but what is the overshoot? Let's uh, draw critical damp case. As you can see, if we draw this, this critical damp, overshoot is equal to zero. And we want to make overshoot as small as possible. And uh, for a critical damp case, which is a technical ideal point, as you can see, overshoot is equal to zero. For that reason, keeping overshoot as small as possible is a desired criteria. And you can achieve this if you make your system over damp or critical damp case. So this formula is specific for under damp case, but overshoot in general is really meaningful and useful metric for characterizing any kind of dynamical system, first order, second order, or higher order, because it really measures uh, how bad you technically uh, miss your uh, steady state position at your first try. Okay, and we want this to be as small as possible. Possibly, of course, equ equating it to zero is the best thing that we can do. Okay, and then setting time. Okay. Uh, we have two different setting times, and it is directly related with the speed of convergence. Okay, so what we can do is, if you remember from your sort of classes, uh, in general, in order to characterize the speed of convergence, we used time constant. Okay, so uh, what is time constant? If you look at that, okay, this is the frequency. If we compute the time constant, it's equal to 1 over psi omega n, or it's equal to 1 over sigma. Okay, that's nice. And this is technically uh, the important part. But uh, instead of just using the time constant, we use a more like uh, intuitive or like practical metric. Okay, setting time is a timing. There are two th different setting times. One of them 2%, one of them uh, 5%. Okay, 5% setting time is the time when my output reaches this band for the first time. Okay, so uh, after this time, my output never exceeds this region, okay? This region is the 5% threshold uh, or 5% uh, percent tolerance defined around the steady state position. And 2% setting time is the technical setting time when my output technically enters the region and never leaves again. Okay, that's nice. So I have two types of setting times. Okay, that's nice. One of them is here. One of them is there. Okay, so how we can compute that? That's good, okay? So computation of exact setting time analytically is not possible as far as I know. Even the like very good approximations, okay, it's there also not very really nice, but we use good enough approximations and you will really like that, okay? So in order to compute 5% setting time, one good approximation is this, three divided by 
the psi omega n, which is the time constant as you can see. Or 2% setting time is equal to 4 divided by the psi omega n. This is the this is 5%, this is 2%. Okay, so technically 5% setting time is approximately equal to 5 times the time constant of the exponential and 2% setting time is equal to 4 times the time constant of the exponential part of the output. Okay, so what we want from the setting time? Of course, we want this to be zero and setting time together with the overshoot is the most important characteristics of a second order system. Okay, because this is the actual metric that we want to minimize, okay? Because if this is small, it means that we reach a threshold and we stay at this threshold. Uh, as you remember, rise time is not very really useless because it technically measures when we first reach one, but it really doesn't care what happens after that. But the setting time is important because it says that under this part, this timing is bad, okay, because this uh, during zero to the t setting time, we are away from the uh, state, state point, either because of the overshoot or because of we are slow. But after this timing, I'm in a threshold that I accept is a good region. It can be 2 or 5%, it depends on the applications or uh, the uh, specifications that are provided by the uh, customer. Okay, so same thing, time and overshoot. I think we are all, uh, we learned all of the characteristics. In the next video, we will solve some examples.